Hey guys, thanks for watching, it's Mike Chen. Now, we have seen it used in basically every spy movie ever, but in reality, unlike Wonder Woman's lasso, truth serums may actually be more of a bust. The term truth serum is a collective term used to describe any mind-altering substance that theoretically can influence a person to spill his or her darkest, deepest secrets to anyone who asks. While there are substances and drugs that do have mind-altering effects, such as LSD, these drugs don't necessarily prevent a person's ability to come up with a fib. So what is truth serum really? The term truth serum was introduced in the mid-1920s and it was discovered by an obstetrician named Robert House. During this discovery, Dr. House, unrelated to this guy, found out that the anesthetic drug scopolamine, which we're going to talk about in just a little bit, has the ability to put his patients in a state of mind where they seem to willingly deliver information as if on impulse. When the drug was then first used in the judicial system, the intent was really not to extract truth from people who were on the stand. It was in fact the reverse. When individuals who were testifying were given the drug, the intended effect was to support their claims of innocence because of the general belief that it would be difficult to tell a lie under its influence. In later years, however, truth serum was employed to extract information against a person's will, hence giving the drug its now infamous reputation. Now, tracing the use of truth serum in the early and mid 20th century is a bit tricky because there's not too much documentation regarding it and the accounts that exist really don't shed a light on whether or not they actually work. For example, in the 1930s, the U.S. police force was said to have allegedly used truth serums on suspects to supposedly incriminate them, but again, there is no documentation to support this account. However, the use of truth-telling substances has been much more employed during World War II by both sides. At first, these drugs were used quite differently, and it might surprise you that these drugs were introduced into the body intravenously and were used to treat soldiers suffering from trauma or temporary amnesia. In the while on the drug, doctors observed that these patients easily recovered counted events. And after the war, doctors who had worked in the military would use these drugs such as sodium pentatol and sodium emetol for psychiatric purposes in order to help people loosen up and talk. Unfortunately, some of these doctors became consultants to the military and the police, and thus the use of the drug was explored and exploited in many different ways for purposes of interrogation. It was because of this that by the 1960s, the United States judicial system has rendered any testimony given out by means of a truth serum inadmissible because it was deemed to have been done through coercion. Now, what kind of truth serums are out there? Like I mentioned earlier, truth serum is a pretty blanket term used for any mind-altering substance of, or drugs that have the so-called effect of inhibiting a person's ability to lie. It is not a single drug, but a variety of substances that have different effects on the human brain. For example, like I mentioned before, scopolamine, first promoted by Dr. House in the 1920s, is a drug extracted from the seeds of a tree known as the get-you-drunk tree because of its obvious effects. Throughout the 20s, and 30s, it was the preferred drug of choice by interrogators and law enforcement because scopolamine had the nasty ability to wipe a person's memory clean after the effects were off. Unfortunately, despite its use in modern medicine to prevent motion sickness and lessen tremors in Parkinson's patients, scopolamine is also notorious for being a date rape drug. Sodium pentothal is a no downer drug that slows down the body's process to send information and stimuli to the brain. Because of this, it is a popular choice among medical practitioners as a prescription drug for pain relief, muscle relaxation, and sedation. However, an overdose of these downer drugs can lead to devastating effects such as death because the drug takes a swift effect within 30 to 45 seconds after being introduced into the body. While the U.S. have already ceased using sodium pentothal, there are still countries that do employ it as a truth serum, such as the case in 2007 in India when authorities used the substance on a local businessman and his servant to solve a multiple murder case that landed the servant a one-way trip to the gallows. Sodium emetol is an extremely powerful sedative. It was widely used in World War II as a sedative to soldiers experiencing shell shock. These days, however, soldiers have banned the use of the drug because of side effects that include cognitive impairment and loss of coordination. It is still, however, used by medical professionals to treat insomnia. This drug is actually really dangerous because one gram can kill a full-grown adult. And as true serum, it's not really good because next to the side effects of cognitive impairment, subjects have been discovered to develop false memories after the fact ethyl alcohol, or basically anything that can get you drunk. There's a saying that a drunken man's words are a sober man's thoughts. That's because alcohol in its pure ethanol form has the no effect of lowering down a person's inhibitions, sometimes to the point where he or she spills out his or her guts both in the literal and figurative sense. However, it is not as potent as other truth serums mentioned because a person may still be capable of coming up with a white lie here and there, even in a complete drunken state. So at the end of the day, do truth serums really work? 
work. If there's anything to be taken away from acquiring information by truth serum is that it should be taken with a grain of salt or really a heap of it for the cautious. It is not because you could get information out of them, but it is because as Esther Inglis Arcall, a reporter from io9 writes, everyone could get too much. It would require time to carefully comb through statements that may end up mostly useless. So there you go guys, that's the truth about truth serum. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you later.